Welcome to Brand Lover, honest, real, and lively conversations for flourishing entrepreneurs and budding business owners on a mission to cultivate a heartfelt brand that connects with their purpose-driven mission. My hope is that you walk away feeling inspired and refreshed with a weekly takeaway in your back pocket that you can apply to your life or business. Are you ready to amplify your confidence with an irresistible brand? Well, lovely, before we get into the podcast, I want to invite you to my free live interactive workshop, Brand Camp, happening on Monday, the 21st of August and Tuesday, the 22nd of August. There are two times available. And if you've been feeling foggy about what it takes to actually connect with your audience on a level that makes them just fall in love with what you're offering them, come and join me. Sign up at the link below and I'll see you there. Mel Daniels is a content strategist and speaker who teaches and empowers women who want more from their business, how to use content in a powerful way. Um, she gives them the confidence they need to become more visible, seen as an expert and take their business to the next level. Well, that's amazing. Welcome, Mel. Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Rachel. It's truly an honor to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure. So first of all, we'd love to know about you. So tell us some yes. fun facts about Mel. <laughs> fun facts. First fun fact is I love to I love to deadlift. That is just like my thing that I'm just so passionate about and kind of really, oh, I don't know, just gives me joy and makes me feel so strong and empowers me to you know, get on with the day. I absolutely love it. So that's a fun fact about me. But fun. um, but for generally speaking, I live in Sydney and I am a mum of two absolutely beautiful teenagers. Oh my goodness, they fill my heart with joy. And um, with my beautiful husband and crazy dingo dog as well. Totally crazy. <laughs> We've bonded over our dog stories before. We have. We um, have. <laughs> but it also gives me hope that when you talk about your teenagers that way, because I'm entering into that era now. So, you know, I think uh, this is completely not business related. But I love that you you speak about them like that because a lot of people sort of keep speaking to me about it, saying, oh, just you wait, you know, oh, you're in for it kind of thing. And, and I don't believe it has to be that way. So I love being inspired by other women who are a little step before me in that way. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Personal encouragement. Um, <laughs> okay, so what's your background? Like what's your area of expertise? Where do you hail from? Like what has your career looked like? Wow, that's such a huge question. But I look at my working life in three different stages. I look at it in terms of my corporate life, um, my full-time mum life, and then my entrepreneurial life as well. Mm -hmm. And each of those three different stages have been so different, Rachel, mm -hmm. so, so different, you, you know, have their own unique challenges. But I have loved every second of every one of those. And I think that I'm a pretty positive and optimistic person. So I really kind of look for the good in things. And I can see how each one of those has really built me into the person I am today and the way that I now show up in my business for my beautiful clients as well. So mm -hmm. I consider myself really to be like an accidental entrepreneur. I didn't really have any role models in my okay. life. You know, it was all about going to school, getting the good grades, uh, going to university and, you know, getting the, the great corporate job. And I was happy with that. I was totally happy with that. And yeah. um, I did actually do all of those things. And it brought me such joy to be able to do those things and achieve those things and do well at those things as well. So my corporate life, I think, um, was really the catalyst for me to understand human relationships and really bring that to the conscious level of what I do. So I have a story that two days before I went on maternity leave in my corporate career, I had my annual um, bonus and pay rise discussion with my manager. And I thought to myself, well, as if I'm going to get a pay rise, as if I'm going to get like a bonus. Mm -hmm. And I did. Mm -hmm. And that said to me that, or really showed to me that when you value humans as, you know, an, a, an asset to your business and an asset to your team and an asset to your environment, then amazing things can happen. So mm -hmm. I felt as I went on maternity leave, I felt like I was going to come back um, after a year off and 
dive straight back into my corporate life because I loved it so much. Absolutely Mm -hmm. loved it. But life threw us a little bit of a curveball and my husband got a opportunity to work overseas in London for a couple of years. So we packed up our six-month-old and moved to a brand new country without their family support, which I know a lot of people do as well, don't they? Like that's just, oh my goodness, phenomenal. Um, But yeah, we packed ourselves up and unfortunately I had to resign because they wouldn't hold my job for two years. And I was kind of devastated at the time. I was like, oh my goodness, that's really sad, but you know, I know that they'll want me back if I, when we come back after two years. But um, things changed. Mm. And I think we change as people as well, don't we, over time? Yeah, it's absolutely. just like this is who we are and this is the, we're in this pigeonhole and this is what we're going to do and be for the rest of our lives. Mm. I really got the opportunity to lean into being a mum and all the beautiful challenges that go with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ended up having my second child uh, whilst I was overseas as well. So that was, yeah, that was a really interesting experience as well, being away from family. Mm. Um, But I think that, like I've said, it it built me into the person that I am am today. So I loved being a mom and all the challenges that came with it. And yeah, I really just valued my time, a very special time I had with both of my children. And then I think, there came a time we had moved back to Australia. There came a time when it was, they didn't rely on me as much. And we were talking about this mm. just when we record about how, you know, our children grow up and yeah. eventually they need us less and less. And I was finding, you know, I didn't have to dress them of a morning or yeah. help them choose their clothes and all those little things that you do invest so much time and energy in. They didn't need me as much anymore. So it was like considering to myself, what is the next step for me? What is that next thing that I'm going to do? And it was very funny that I I think that we're given opportunities or we're presented with opportunities at times in our life when we least expect it. And when we're open to them, then amazing things can actually happen. So one day a friend of mine called me and said, Mel, you know everyone in the local community. I'm after a mom to help me out going through a really busy period in my law firm. It's just me and I need some help. Do you know anyone? And I was like, yeah, I know some people. I'll make some calls. I'll see, you know, who who wants to do that. And then I stopped for a second and thought, why couldn't that be me? Yeah, cool. Why couldn't that be me? So that was my foray into the admin side of things. I then ended up uh, going on to create a virtual assistant business for four years and then I Um, made a pivot which we'll talk about later I think in terms of calling myself a content strategist where I am today so that's kind of a bit of a story about the journey to where I am today those three different phases and you know really how I loved I loved every single one of them yes I love this I just love the way you speak about the life journey and you know like just really finding joy in all of those seasons like that's just yeah it's um I think that's a rare gift and yeah I hope that that inspires some other mums who are potentially in that season um that it is so short isn't it like you you feel so you can feel so depleted like you're giving so much to these little beings and it's quite monotonous um but just to know that it doesn't it's not forever and I love that you just immersed yourself in that and enjoyed it um and then what opened was you you sort of I don't know anyway I'm just recapping and enjoying everything that you said but um so I didn't know that you had a VA business Uh yeah so I was interested to hear this story about the rebrand because you did mention it Mm -hmm. um so so what did the early days look like when you were running your VA business So from a business perspective, you know, like any new entrepreneur out there, you start your business for the flexibility and the time that you'll be able to spend with your children without fully understanding all of the moving parts. Mm. There's so many moving parts of a business, especially when you're starting out, where to start, 
you know, do you start with your logo? Do you start with your website? Do you start with a lead magnet? Do you start with social media? Like there's just so many moving pieces. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just really about finding my feet and understanding who it was that I was actually going to serve because <laughs> like everyone, when they first start their business, I felt like I could do everything for everyone. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was soon recognizable to me that that was not the case. And in trying to do that, obviously I, I was speaking to no one. So it was then a process of unconsciously, I guess, niching and really finding my ideal client. And I found that over time, content was something that I was really good at and that I really loved, which is kind of ironic because at high school, I was really crap at, at English. And my mm. teacher used to you know, laugh at me because I used to complain about things all the time, but I've really fallen into this space of creating content, but not just for content's sake. So for me, I think when I was starting out with my VA business, it was finding my feet in the content space and then finding or really observing the fact that a lot of my clients who were ma mainly women, solopreneurs as well, were using content in such a haphazard way mm. and, and, and it, totally not their fault because they were following someone and that someone said, oh, you have to do this. In order to be successful, you need to be on LinkedIn and you need to do five posts a week. So they would come to me and say, Mel, I need to be on LinkedIn. I need to do five posts a week. Can you do it for me? Yeah, sure. I'll do that. No, pro no problems. Or they would come to me and say, oh, Mel, I need to get an email out. Can you write the email for me and send it? Like, yeah, sure. I can do that. But without any real consideration of what's the entire ecosystem, what's the purpose of me actually creating this content? How does it fit with everything else? So that kind of throwing content spaghetti at the wall strategy was obviously not working for them. And I really started to see how if you could use it with more purpose in mind, how much more powerful it would be. So that's when I thought about uh, really calling myself something different and really honing in on that content side of things and how people could use it purposefully and powerfully in their business as well. Yeah. So this is um, a lot of businesses might sort of relate to this particular journey where they start their business and then they really like they they find their niche or they they work with a particular type of client and they love it and it's amazing. And then they start attracting those similar sorts of clients or type of work and everything. And it gets to this point then where their original brand isn't actually reflecting um, where they're headed or where they like, it's sort of like, it's like this download happens. And, um, all of a sudden there's this disconnect with what their brand is saying about them as opposed to where they want to be going. Um, so when that time came for you, mm. what feelings and emotions came up for you during that time that you didn't expect, even though you want, you knew that you wanted to, mm. you know, to step into this new iteration or your business this new niche be known for something specific yeah mm. Talk us through that. yeah so at the time for me having a virtual assistant business and doing so well at that I had mm. a couple of team members as well that were helping me out so for me it was a decision around do I want to continue down this path of doing and become an agency type mm. scenario or do I really want to take a step back from that and be the strategic person and really build a personal brand instead. So that was a that was kind of like the first decision that I had to make. And it was a really tough decision because I loved the clients I was working with. I loved the fact that I could create content for them. I just wasn't loving the fact that it wasn't done with strategy. And to me, I felt like I was doing them a disservice almost yeah. because there was no real strategy and I was just doing what they um, had asked for. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, it was that decision first around agency or personal brand and then saying to myself, well, okay, yes, I want to go down the personal brand route, but oh my goodness, the imposter syndrome <laughs> that comes along with that is phenomenal, Rachel. And I know that anyone who is going through this right now or has been through it knows that you question yourself so much yeah. in that process. So at that same time, when I was making the transition, I hired a coach. 
I redid my website. Mm -hmm. I went through a mini rebrand. All of those things in conjunction with calling myself a strategist, who am I? Who am I to call myself a strategist? <laughs> like, you know, who, who, who am I? Um, I think that those feelings of imposter syndrome were very, very real, very real indeed. And how did you overcome them? That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. I think that it was a combination of having support. So having that coach, having that person who could feed back to me that what I was doing was the right thing and that I was on the right path. And I think the second thing was the mini rebrand that I had. So when, when I first started out in business, and I know that many business owners do this as well, you know, you go to the friend of a friend who happens to know a little bit about graphic design and they create a logo for you and put together a mood board for you and, and off you go. I, did, I had done that and I kind of felt like there was something missing and I wasn't quite sure what it was. There was something missing it. But, you know, she was just doing the best she could with the information that I had given her. It ended up being like this mis mishmash of colours that I loved mm. that didn't necessarily go together or represent me as a person or what I was trying to achieve. Mm. So, but, you know, being a newbie myself, I didn't really understand that. I was just like, wow, here, here I am. I've got my colours. I've got my logo. Here I go. Yeah. I'm in business. <laughs> yeah. So having that mini rebrand when I changed direction with my business really helped me feel more confident, I mm -hmm. feel like. It was more of a reflection of where I wanted to go and who I was in that moment as a person as well and what I was trying to get across to my beautiful audience as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And even just having the courage to step through those feelings and invest in yourself in that way. Um, you know, I think imposter syndrome is rife, especially when we are up leveling. Like it's it's just such a common thing that like it happens to everyone. And and I guess it's inevitable. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that because it's normal. Like it's so normal and, and it's great to talk about it because it's something that every business owner will experience. So thank you for sharing that as well. Um, now I want to get into a little bit and like the, the pick your brain section of the podcast <laughs> um, to hero you and what you do because you're amazing. Um, so before we get into a few sort of like deeper questions, mm -hmm. I would love for you to define content because, mm -hmm. you know, as you mentioned earlier, like as a new business owner, there's so many things like all of us, like I think marketing is just like the the biggest slap in the face as for a small business owner that you're not really, like it's not even on your radar when you're thinking about starting your business. Like you just think how amazing it would be to do this thing or create this product or, you know, whatever until it comes to that point and you're like, well, how am I actually going to sell this? <laughs> exactly. And yeah. So I would love to, you know, to define that because, mm -hmm you know, just so that we're everyone's on the same page, really. Yeah, so I think quite simply content is the way that we communicate our message, either physically or digitally. So it can encompass a whole wide range of things. I think that people most commonly think of, you know, email marketing. They think of social media when it comes to content. They think about blogs, perhaps. They might think about videos and podcasts. They might think about website as well. So that's all the digital side of things. But I really think that content can also be the physical side of things as well. So it's your business card that you might hand over if anyone mm -hmm. still has business cards or, you know, the flyers that they create. Um, it can be both physical and digital as well. So at a super high level, that's really what it's all about, communicating uh, your message to your ideal client. Yeah, thank you. Because I think that content can often be confused with copywriting as well. So um so it's basically every every way that you're communicating with your brand. Yeah, just um, everything. It's just everything. You're doing. Um, okay. So we talk a lot in branding about customer touch points. Mm 
yeah. um, these being all of the points of contact that a potential buyer is exposed to along mm. the customer journey to becoming a customer. Um, so how does your content enhance this experience and how much does having a solid brand affect this impact that your content is having? Okay. Sorry, it's a big question. It is. You might have to ask me the second part again. That's but, fine. <laughs> so with, with the touch point side of things, so I believe that content has two main purposes. The first purpose is to showcase who you are as a person, as a brand, uh, what you stand for, what you don't stand for. And the second main purpose of content is to move your ideal client through a journey with you from not knowing anything about you all the way through to becoming a raving fan. Now, the way that I look at this or, or I teach this, it says five different phases. The first is the connect phase, where it's really an opportunity for you and your ideal client to get to know each other, not just your ideal client knowing you, but you knowing them as well. Um, and then the next phase is the subscribe phase where we're taking them off any social media platforms or websites or wherever they may be at that moment in time, taking them off those platforms and putting them onto our own real estate, which is our, our email list. The next stage is the nurture stage where we have that opportunity to, to really showcase all of the amazing things that we can provide to our ideal client through insights, through um, just beautiful storytelling um, and just really continue to take them on that journey through to the next phase, the most important phase, which is the convert phase so where they actually purchase from you. And that's all about, you know, really helping them to make a, a confident decision, an informed decision of working with you. And then the last phase is the onboard phase. So that obviously happens uh, after we um, they convert. So thinking about content and how it can actually move your ideal client through that client journey, we start thinking about how we can use it more purposefully and powerfully by really matching the types of content to that client journey, okay? So just as an example, um, if we take that first phase, the connect phase, we're really looking at the focus content and Sorry, when I say focus content, I mean blogs, podcasts, or videos. So the blogs, podcasts, or videos that um, can really help educate our beautiful ideal client. We're looking at social media. How can we use the beauty of storytelling to help our ideal client identify with us as people? Um, we might use our website. We might use conversations in DMs or PMs that are obviously uh, invited, not spammy DMs and PMs. We may turn up in Facebook groups to allow our ideal client to get to know us better. And we might also do some guesting. So like this, get guest podcasting. You might use that as a tool in terms of your content strategy to connect with um, a wider audience or a different audience. So that's just one example of how you can use content with purpose rather than just throwing that content spaghetti out, of, you know, out into the world and taking on board from people, you know, you might listen to an Instagram specialist and they say you have to do this in terms of Instagram. And so you try and go and do that without any thought about mm -hmm. how it is moving your ideal client through that client journey with you. Yes. And yes, thank you for mentioning that because I want to talk about like, even like, even though you've broken that down and explained like why you would use content how you would use content to um you know strategically in those different points um I hear you talk about reels and stories and blogs and podcasts and do 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 all <laughs> things all those things are like etc 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 like you can literally just go on and on and on so mm. I've seen a lot of business like conversations between small business owners um around the overwhelm that surrounds create like and the pressure to create attractive mm. content to market their business like there's this pressure and almost like um it's almost competitive um particularly on places like Instagram like I couldn't do a reel because look at that person's reel like I could never compete with that and like my client would look at mine compared to theirs and you know and then it's that you know the down talking and and it's just 
you know what, like over overwhelm breeds like stagnation um, and then they're not doing anything. So um, like there's this increasing pressure to be creating reels and like do you do a blog or a podcast or like, you know, <laughs> It's like mm-hmm. there's engaging content and entertaining content and relatable content. And then you have to show up on stories three times a day. Um, so <laughs> I'm painting a picture here. I'm leading somewhere. Um, are you able to give our listeners some useful, practical, real life tips yes. um, to make creating content easier or even more manageable? Given that, like, and we talked about this at the at the very beginning, how business, like for us as home home-based businesses like we're integrating our business into our life and everything like it's not just creating content it's like it's running the business and it's you know client calls and creating products and oh oh my gosh I'm getting overwhelmed just thinking about it okay <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense 100 percent down for us Mel okay let's break it down so first of all I want to acknowledge I want to acknowledge the fact that content overwhelm is a very real thing mm-hmm. it is a very very real thing Like you said, there's so many outside sources saying to us that we should be doing things, okay? So I think that a couple of really easy, quick wins for people if they are feeling like they're in that space of overwhelm, obviously, take a step back first. Take a step back and breathe and think about who you most like and trust and who you want to listen to and who you want to block out. A kind of... (laughs) is the example of like when you're parenting and you have your in-laws telling you something, you have your parents telling you something, you have a book that you've just borrowed from the library and your friends are doing something totally different and your doctor is saying something else, the pediatrician is saying something else, you just go, whoa, who am I going to listen to? And I think that if you choose just one or two of those sources, then first of all, that's going to decrease your overwhelm. The second thing that I would love people to do is really tune into their superpower. What is your strength? What is your strength? So I have this really cute quiz that I give people to find out what their superpower is when it comes to content creation. And not only will that help you recognize and identify your strengths, Mm -hmm. it will also help you identify your weaknesses and what to look out for. So for example, I'm a planner. I love being organized. I love scheduling my content. I love, you know, planning, doing six month plans, all of those sorts of things. Whereas my beautiful free spirits just go, whoa, back up the truck. I cannot plan. (laughs) They just say me, me. (laughs) Like I'm, that doesn't feel right for me. It feels too restrictive. It doesn't feel flexible. I can't do that. So just understanding your approach and what your strengths are and maybe what your weaknesses are and how you could do things differently or work with your strengths is really super important when it comes to overwhelm. I cannot stress it enough Mm. because when you're working with your strengths, you're really, I don't know, you just enjoy it far more, far more. Like it doesn't feel like hard work. It's, it yeah. could be, it's, it may be hard. It may be hard to create the content, but it's not hard work to actually do it. So yeah. that's the first thing. The second thing that I love to say to my beautiful clients and members is be mindful of your time, your energy, and your resources. Mm-hmm. Your life and business will flow so much easier once you really stop doing hashtag all the things. Mm-hmm. When you take that step back and start to acknowledge and accept what you can realistically achieve in the time that you have with the energy. And we spoke about, you know, we're all in different seasons of life and the resources, whether that's your money, uh, people to help you support, whatever that looks like for you. If you can let go of those shoulds, then it's just going to make it so much easier for you. So much easier, easier. Release that pressure, Mm -hmm. totally release that pressure. And then the last thing that I would say to help you with your overwhelm, and this may seem a little bit strange, but I'm going to say be really clear on your values and your beliefs as this is what is the foundation and the core piece of your message and it attracts the right people and repels the wrong people. 
So when we are very clear on what our values and beliefs are, then that really drives how we show up for our um, our beautiful audience, how we run our business, um, what decisions that we make in our lives. And being clear on those things helps you make those clear decisions so you can reduce the overwhelm. Yes, I love that. And I'm all for that. And that sort of... Um... The first thing that we do in the branding process is establish those things because, mm. you know, you live and die by those things in, in your business and how you present your brand. And and I'll say thank you. Um, I think that's very wise, very wise advice. Um, so I just want to give you a heartfelt thank you for coming and chatting with me today and sharing your story. Um, so to wrap up, I have some rapid fire questions. Oh my goodness. I didn't prepare you for. This is like my worst nightmare, Rachel, being a planner. It's like I need. (laughs) It's spontaneous. (laughs) Okay, let's go. Um, Shoot them. I'm a Sagittarius, so apparently spontaneity is like in my blood. I don't know. Um, Okay, so what's your favourite app? Weather Zone. (laughs) I love Weather Zone. (laughs) I go on that thing at least 10 times a day. Yeah, me too. I love seeing the radar. Is the rain yeah. coming? What's the temperature? Yeah. I think that's like for a mum, it's just the best, like preparing what to dress the kids in and like knowing <laughs> what things to take to sport. Anyway, this is meant to be rapid fire. Um, okay. Time of day. The moment I put my head on the pillow of an evening. So good. So good. One of my daughters is like that. Every night we put her to bed and she's like, oh isn't going to bed just the best ever like she's always the first in bed she's all tucked in by herself (laughs) love it oh it's so sweet um favorite exercise oh weightlifting deadlifts yes you mentioned that already um your favorite habit or ritual um we have a family ritual of always going out for dinner on our birthdays, no matter what day of the week it falls. So even if it was a school night, we would always go out and the person whose birthday it is gets to choose. So that's probably my favourite ritual. Lovely. I love that. Favourite way to relax? That would be baking and decorating cupcakes. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to send me a photo of one of your cupcakes. Okay. We'll do. Um, and favourite thing about your business? Oh, it would have to be the women I meet, the women that I get to serve, the women that I get to hang out with, the women like you that I get to talk with. It just fills my soul with absolute joy and I feel grateful every moment of the day for the connections that I've made through my business. Yes. So I'm on board with that. I totally agree. Um, So thank you so much again. Where can we find you? Where can we find out? Like I know that you've got some amazing free resources um, that, you know, if anything sparked curiosity during our chat, go and download Mel's amazing free resources and go and say hi. Like she's yes. Lovely yes lovely. let's connect let's start that first set stage of the connection. <laughs> journey with me exactly. um, you, can, you can connect with me on instagram and facebook my handle is at meld business if you want to find that quiz i was talking about it's on my website meldbusinessservices.com.au thank you so much thanks for having me if you found this episode inspiring or helpful i invite you to share the link with another woman in business or someone who needs to hear this message Every woman we can support to grow a meaningful, profitable brand is another woman who is free to live a purposeful life for herself and be more present for her family. None of us are alone in the challenges we face in business, but the solution can start with a gift from someone else, and it could be a podcast episode just like this one. Thank you for listening.